So, Adam, it's an interview I never personally wanted to do. I don't think many fans would uh, have ever wanted to hear it, but I think it's one we all knew would uh, happen someday. You've made the decision to leave Worthing Football Club to pursue a, a fantastic opportunity in your career at York City. Um, can you just talk us through it? Um, no, yeah, just it's the first time I've been a little bit nervous doing an interview with you, I hate to be fair. Um, yeah, no, just like an absolute whirlwind of a weekend, really. Um, was taking the under 15s at, at Eastbourne away and then get a call from Nathan um, on the way back from there uh, to say there was some interest um, from York and yeah things are just snowball from there really um, been a real like whirlwind uh, 24 48 hours um, yeah just uh, as soon as I sort of spoke to the owner up at York it just really aligned with uh, the vision that I've got um, and I've been saying to um, you know whether for a while I've had a few offers uh, in the last 12 months and um, you know for whatever reason they haven't um, sort of surfaced um, but yeah this one just really aligned with um, a lot of things that I'm looking for really so yeah um, seems like a an unbelievable opportunity and one that was just too good to turn down for myself and my family um, but yeah obviously comes with um, a bit of a bit of sadness as well because leaving a, a very good football club here and um, you know probably feels like a little bit of unfinished business with, with 12 games to go. Yeah um, but I think it's no question it would be a difficult decision for you to make I think everyone knows the love that you have of working and you've got an immense amount of pride in what's happened over the time you've been here like the way the club is transformed compared to when you first came in December of 2013 what is there any sort of sadness with the connection you've had with this club and everything you've built with this club is there any sort of sadness in, in leaving that behind yeah like I said an uh, enormous amount of sadness really um, you know just even like making that drive um, here today um, you know, one that I've done near enough every day for um, the last six years or so and um, yeah even sad just just doing that um, but yeah enormous amount of sadness um, some really good people uh, at this football club um, and like I say it's, I sort of feel like I've um, you know developed and, and grown with, with the club as well um, when I first came there was there was no 3G pitch here after the stand was falling down and um, you know where George and um, you know Barry and, and Keith and that and looking to take the club um, you know it's really exciting times um, but yeah the, the lure of York was just just too great for me to to turn down at this stage of my career. Tim Stanford if you look at back at those achievements you mentioned that the uh, state of the club was him when you first came and there's no playing budget before George either at one point. The team that was built though, the, the uh, philosophy of football and the youth development, it was all come from such an early time. I feel like that's an accomplishment you'd be particularly proud of, but we could look at the trophies as well. What would be some of your greatest accomplishments you think you've had here at work? Um, no, like I said, I think you've sort of touched upon it there. Um, there was no youth structure in place here. There was um, an under-18 team um, and we've now got 14s, 15s, 16s, um, a real pathway at the football club, um, and under 19s academy uh, youth program as well. Um, that you know had a bit of a hand in, in setting up. So um, yeah, and I think um, just all all age groups and every um, single person that you know has had to listen to me, uh, coach them out on that pitch. Um, just fills me with a, a lot of pride, you know, probably more than the trophies. It's, you know, coaching lads under sevens, under eights, under nine, nine year old, and, and then lads that have come into our, our youth team set up at under 14 and then playing our first team um, and see them develop and, and see all the players as well that, that come to us, Jesper come to us as a 16 year old and got to feel, uh, fulfill his, his dream of um, being a professional footballer. Um, you know, I think them them stories um, will you know really make me smile and um, probably give me more joy and satisfaction than 
than lifting trophies. But you know, obviously, um, you know, I'm a winner. I enjoy winning games of football, and um, you know, I want want the team to to succeed and 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 lift trophies each year. And it's it's been nice to be able to do that. Yeah, there's been a few of them this year. Three years of well, it should have been winning trophies, but it's finally getting over that. And the senior cup, the who you took so many years to win that again, some incredible achievements on the pitch as well as everything around it. No, certainly, um, you know, first round proper as well. One low still sends me with our performance up there that day, but uh, yeah, no, there's um, lots, like I say, lots of lots to be um, cheerful for, and you know, I'm just enormously grateful for everyone that's um, been part of it. Um, I'd hate to start reading off names, um, but yeah, there's been some some real people behind the scenes. It's, it's, it's not just myself, I can't take credit for it all, and some real people have given up a lot of time to, to help the club uh, succeed. Um, and to every player that's that's put on the Worthing shirt, ultimately, you know, it's down to them. I'm, I'm getting this move and getting this opportunity because what they uh, do out on the pitch um, so yeah just enormously uh, grateful for, for everyone that sort of um, played played for Worthing in, in that time and all of the staff and everyone behind the scenes that have given up so much time and effort. And talking of guys off the pitch you think one of the most special things about your time here at Worthing is the connection you've always had with the fans I think the the respect you've always had for what they provide and the love they've always given you right back. What would you say about the supporters here at the club? No, yeah, so obviously a very sort of special connection. Um, you know, not not too long ago we was all together, um, and it was a sad time um, with with Sarah and stuff. So you know, I'll never never forget the the fan base and how well they've sort of uh, you know responded to everything we've done and tried to do um, so yeah there's a lot of respect there and um, you know I think obviously you get that a little bit with um, being successful and winning games of football um, with that comes uh, a bit more of a connection I suppose um, but no yeah I can't can't speak highly enough of them and you know hoping to to be in the shed um, come come April for the playoff games and I you know, might even be able to make that Sunday game uh, that's on the TV. So I'll definitely be coming back as a as a supporter to to follow the progress of the, of the club and definitely be the first result that I look out for um, on a Saturday afternoon. So we'll look a little bit more at this at this move. It's a phenomenal opportunity for you, as you said. A professional club. They've got a lot of history. Or um, yeah, a brilliant opportunity all round. But what's the driving force for you for going on this move? Um, just. Uh, sort of speaking to the owner, it's it's very similar um, in terms of you know George here as well uh, as a young owner. Um, he's got real sort of um, high ambitions for the club, and the ambition of the club sort of matches mine. I want want to be a manager uh, in the football league, and you know um, one step closer to that. Um, but yeah. Uh, the resources they've got up there, and you know, a magnificent stadium. Um, I think they average between four and five thousand every home game and um, training ground. And and ultimately, I've said to to Wavin for for a while now that um, you know, so grateful for the opportunity here to work with all the different age groups, but to just focus on on one team um, day to day and be that your full time sort of bread and butter. Um, you know that's that's something that I've really sort of feel ready for, and um, yeah, that's a that's a, that's a big big pull and a big factor to be able to do that. Absolutely, everyone wishes you the best of luck with it. And um, well, many questions have been asked over the years, not just by me, by Pete, by all the people before. This would be the last one from me. Uh, if you had a message for the next manager at Worthing Football Club, what would that be? Oh, it's a tough one. Yeah, talking about Pete uh, in the port cabin over there, that's no longer there because it's a nice fan zone. So, yeah, like, just say uh, there, so many, so many good memories. And um, no, I think uh, they won't need me to sort of give them any message or anything. They'll, they'll come in and they'll feel what this club's all about. And um, 
I'm sure um, you know they'll get that connection with the supporters because it's a it's a really really good good place to to um, learn the trade and um, like I'm so grateful um, for for the opportunity that's been given to me and I'm sure the next manager I'm sure there'll be lots of applicants um, because it's a it's a real you know one of the, it's the biggest non-league club in in Sussex in my opinion um, and the uh, that the form would show that as well. Um, so that was always the dream when I took over, and I'm pleased I'm leaving it there for the next manager. And yeah, I just hope they have half the amount of enjoyment that I've had, really.